bastards. Today we are going to to take a look at uh, at the movie The Divide, which is about a group of survivors who are trapped in a basement uh, after a nuclear explosion. So this will be an interesting movie. Let's see what uh, how how do how they uh, portray their survival skills, uh, perhaps techniques or the errors they make and let's analyze this uh, bad boy so we'll see what uh, how this will uh, become wow that was fast uh, only a few seconds in and I see a major uh, problem. Um, yeah, the like I said in of one of my in the series of the nuclear disasters, uh, especially the part with nuclear weapons, the usually when uh, there is a nuclear explosion, uh, there will be a flash that is so bright it can uh, burn the iris of your and corona of your eyes. So you will be blind, permanent or for a, a, a certain time of period, till it kind of heals, it's like a burning wound. Uh, and yet, she's looking right at it. You can see in her eye the rockets, the the reflection of the rockets that go down. I would advise in that situation. I know she's stunned because oh shit, nuclear bombs are falling as you want to see it, and it makes it more dramatic. But the moment you see those rockets, turn around, go inside of the building. Uh, cover your ears, open your mouth um, to to prevent that your uh, eardrums will pop uh, inside of the building and turn away so the flash won't blind you or burn your skin. Uh, not to mention the flying glass from the shockwave that will, will undoubtedly follow on this. And uh, open your mouth so your, uh, your lungs don't get uh, overpressure and they will not uh, rupture inside of your body. That's why you keep your mouth open. So... Um, yeah, I know she's in shock, but she this girl would already be blind uh, from the flash you, uh, normally. All right, let's see how this will go. All right, this is already good. Uh, because everyone is running from uh, out and tries to escape to the lower part of the building uh, through the uh, by the stairs. Those has two big uh, increases in their survival. First of all, uh, if you go through a stairs instead of an elevator, of course, it's logical. You have, have more say, uh, you will have more chance to survive a blast wave that is coming for a very slow reason. I for some reason around here. And stairways, especially emergency stairways, are built in such a way that they uh, they are less uh, uh, prone to uh, collapsing or other dangerous you know, like fires because they are made uh, like the uh, like they are not that flammable as the other parts of the building uh, are more sturdily built. So that's already good that they go from the stairs. Uh, what I don't, what I find weird is. You already start to see the the blast wave hasn't reached them yet, and yet it already starts to to uh, shake the whole building, uh, which is weird because first we have the blast waves, and then it it is followed by the by the earthquake the earthquake like uh, shock wave that will follow because a blast wave is fast is faster than what a uh, tectonic uh, movement. So that's already weird, but yeah, those are two good uh, things they already do here. Uh, second thing uh, from the stairs is, uh, if you go to a lower uh, part of the building, you have more chance to survive because when a building collapses, the tops, the top uh, floors will be crushing, 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 and at a certain point, the there is too much material to crush, so there uh, under beneath those uh, there will be more holes uh, or intact floors uh, that will be. Um, Helping you survive because you have more space instead of those collapsed uh, collapsed uh, upper floors. So already also good to go to lower floors. Uh, what I don't like is everyone where 
where is everybody going? Because they, they it looks like they go downwards and they try to go outside for some reason. Uh, in this case, in the, going in the middle of the building is your best chance to survive. Not only the flying glass, debris and such, uh, and the flash, but also for the collapsing of the building. So, uh, I don't know what these people are planning, but yeah, that's already, that's another thing that we can learn from this. Panic. Every, there is the mob mentality. Everybody tries to run into the safe, uh, into where they think it's safe. Other people will follow those people because more uh, we have we are biologically programmed to look, to follow other people because it gives us a, a, a feel of safety. But in this case, it can be very dangerous because everybody now who wants to get out of the building for some reason is packed together. It's a stampede, except for the few survivors that will be be told by some guy to go into the basement. So. Alright, I was wrong. I thought the guy was was calling them get back in, back in into the basement, but apparently he said get back, get back. Uh, so he was planning to go down there as well. So this is actually a good lesson for preppers. Uh, if you have a fallout shelter or something else uh, that provides protection, um, people who are desperate, they will come for it. Uh, especially if they know, would know about it, about it. I don't know if these people knew this, 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 this. There was a cellar, or they would know that it was a safe place. But they were getting away from the stampede, and with a few men, they went into the basement. And these guys were also followed by an old, old group, like you can see. So the guy who was trying to close the door didn't has had the choice to let those guys in. But then the other group came. And yeah, then he locked the door in front of them before the blast wave. So yeah, this is an interesting lesson in if you are a prepper to your to get up your obsec, obsec. Don't tell anybody about your survival plans or your stockpiles or your bunker or fallout shelter because it will draw people who didn't prepare. Uh, yeah, so that's a lesson we can learn from this uh, scene. All right, this character I like. I like the way he's thinking. Uh, the clo after the nuclear uh, explosion, everybody uh, they survived the initial blast, and now he knows the next the next day he's starting to tape off the the doors. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to keep, uh, try to help to get uh, radioactive particles and dust and and smoke perhaps out from outside the door because the door. Is higher up and has more chance to leak, to leak or have more openings. Um, I'm still wondering where he, this guy gets his fresh air because I don't know if he if he's got a an air filter and pump system to get to filter air from outside uh, from the, uh, from contaminated particles and get fresh air inside of this uh, enclosed uh, shelter. But we will see what he, what this guy will uh, will do. He seems prepared actually. If you think about it. I like this guy. 
He says he built a basement to a fallout shelter by his own. He's just a janitor on this building apparently. And in all this time he has prepared with with food, ways to to get electricity with a generator. He now he even got had plans for more people because the guy asked why do you have so many man- mattresses? Um, and he says uh, that it's because uh, people threw them threw them away from upstairs and he kept them and reused them. So that's already a good way of thinking. Um, and he even built a, a toilet. This is, what I, this is what I really like because the toilet, he says, doesn't run on water. Uh, you've got to throw some lime on every dookie you take. Um, and that he built it in, here, here inside um, that way to conserve water. That's this guy is is already my favorite character. He is he's a real prepper to say. And yet he's ex, ex, he's explaining how everything will work down here to these other people who who are still in shock from the from the reality check they they got. And yet uh, he, this guy that you uh, in leather fest he's not re- not not mentally ready yet because. He looks at the toilet and he thinks that's di- that's disgusting. That's uh, not a really a survival mentality. Uh, that's reality that has not been sinking in in this guy. So, uh, yeah, it was already good thinking of this guy. Uh, I like him. It is, this seems so realistic, actually, because one of the guys, like I said before, who has not been to the reality check, has no survival mentality, a skill already. He is goes a little bit mad, already cabin fever after one day, <laughs> which is fast to be saying. Uh, you would expect this kind of behavior after being cooped up a long, a ver- uh, after a week, perhaps. But this guy already after day one he is goes a little bit mad. He wants to to get out of the door. Um, I think that this guy is, is uh, claustrophobic, and perhaps that's the way why he's already in this uh, short time already reacting this uh, heavily on the situation. He wants to go outside and want to open the door, but uh, I, was, I shall call this uh, the good character Pepper Mick. Uh, Pepper Mick is uh, is protecting everybody by uh, he's willing to use violence to protect these people from themselves because he wants to open the door while there is fallout and uh, he was uh, I don't think he really wanted to hit those guys he just wanted to scare them he thinks because if this guy is as prepped as I think he he would have not missed with the with the X because I think I think he did it on purpose to just scare them off um, and what I also like is the guy, after he scared him away from the door, the guy was still mad, pissing, he was spitting at him, uh, cursing him. And uh, yet, uh, Prepper Mick remains calm in this stage of the engagement. He did not go further. He tried to es- de-escalate the situation by saying nothing. He could, if he was really mad, uh, angry at them for this uh, attempt to do something stupid, he could have done something or said something in anger, but he still restrained himself. And he's explaining to the rest that it is for their own good that uh, this door will be locked. So I really like this character and it's realistic how these people would react. Uh, yeah, I, I like it, really. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. The, first of all, they cook, uh, they cook a dinner in one pot uh, to eat together from it. So that's already good in a stressful, uh, menta- uh, in a stressful situation with a group, because to eating together will uh, will make more bonding. It's uh, a more effective way of cooking and saving on energy, and uh, 
Yeah, it will ra raise up morale. Uh, yeah, this is very good. And uh, I saw they were cooking beans, uh, which is a very good um, source of protein, fibers, uh, fat, and uh, other nutrients that you need. Um, it's a uh, a food crop, uh, how do you say this? A food staple that will, is very good in a long term survival situation. So, yeah, I already like this. And what I like even more is while everybody is still, while everybody is waiting for the, till the cooking is done, uh, they are keeping themselves occupied with conversations, reading anything they can find to keep themselves occupied. And they, they are powering this whole thing with a bicycle with a dynamo powered bicycle that is standing over there uh, so they take turns to keep uh, the electricity up so that's also a way good way to not only uh, get energy in this uh, f energy for light in this closed environment but also probably for filters uh, for a filter system I think I have not seen it yet but it would make sense how they could survive this long. Uh, in an enclosed space, space without uh, with only the oxygen that is inside of this, so that's already good. And uh, yeah, it's also a good way to keep in shape, which is very important in a, such a, a survival situation, uh, especially in a tight enclosure like this. So uh, I really like this scene. Uh, so far, it's uh, very realistic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> this one guy <laughs> was losing it. He's got in a tantrum, and uh, I call this. Uh, I shall name this uh, character now Uncle Mickey because of this scene. Because he slaps the guy to get him a little bit in check into reality uh, on a not that violent way, to be honest. Because he could have uh, slapped with a fist, but he used his flap, flap hand to get him into out of his shock. And then the little girl was scared and he said, Don't you worry, little girl. Uh, don't you worry. Uncle Mickey only slaps little girls and you're a big girl, right? <laughs> I love this scene. And yeah, he tries to comfort the little girl. Makes a, uh, He tries to make some little jokes to feel not only the, the little girl, but also the... Other people on there uh, a little bit better uh, uh, to to dis de escalate the situation because of making some jokes after this uh, ten tension situation. So uh, I like I like this character Prepper Mick. Okay. Okay, this is getting weird. Uh, some uh, so they got some people got through the door with some uh, torches. Uh, this looks like uh, highly military uh, soldiers or, or something. Uh, they wear some sort of uh, I don't know some weird CBRN suit. Um, they use American American weapons. So this could be the government, uh, I would say, because it makes sense. Even after a nuclear explosion, the government will probably have contingency, contingency plans 
But yet again, they don't speak to these people. They just point, aim their weapons. Even those people who try to communicate with with their what they think at first are their saviors, they just react silence and violence uh, to keep to keep them at bay, uh, which is already weird uh, because if I was as those soldiers and I had the mission, because you will see in the next, uh, uh, you will see what they have done. Um, I would communicate, say, give them at least a false safe uh, feel of sa safety, like we are here to save you. Anybody, this is part of the procedures to get you into quarantine and such. Instead of just aiming their weapons and be silent, that's that's just stupid uh, from those guys. And yet uh, they they say nothing and just take that little girl, uh, inject her with uh, with some. Uh, I know it's something to sleep, I guess, or to pacify her and put her in a bag and take her away. Uh, yeah, it's a weird situation which could be resolved with just even if they had fal false pretenses with uh, with uh, communications. And this, what we can learn from this is, even when you think you are saved, uh, when you uh, when you think they are here to save you. Uh, the government have their own plans of prepping and survival and contingency plans uh, because perhaps they will look for uh, in a real situation I would guess they would perhaps only take people with certain skills like uh, anybody who is a doctor and engineer or good with uh, who have a particular set of skills they will need in the aftermath of a nuclear war I guess and perhaps some uh, the f uh, women or little girls to for uh for yeah for the aftermath to pro reproduce uh so that's what i think that this is uh this is the thing that is happening right now what i find good about uh uh prepper mick is um uh, he saw he didn't trust those people he didn't think he didn't even know who will come in and he went already back from the moment he saw them coming through the door so there was already a good survival instinct to, while the other people didn't know what to do, he took action and got in a bag and looked and observed the situation from far if it goes wrong, so he can prepare for self-defense. So that's good of proper proper Mickey here, over here. Yeah, it's, it's this, this has taken a weird turn to be honest. So some people got also got also scared, got in the back, and those military guys followed those, followed them, and uh, yeah, everybody did a few things. This is also really good, uh, very how do I say this? Realistic. Some people hide. Some people just wander, uh, run around in the hope they would lose them. As and people like that uh, black guy, the guy with the leather vest, and of course Pepper Mick, they hide and grabbed the nearest weapon they had um, and they started uh, they came out of their hiding spot when those guys uh, with guns got in so that's a survival tactic we can we can think about from a, like a spree killing or a terrorist attack the same things can be applied here Hire, run, hide uh, or fight back in the last instance uh, as a last resort so that's a very good thing here what I also like is uh, um, to, they show how difficult it is to kill someone. Uh, you know, in the most films, it's like, oh, one bash on their head, one step, and the other person is dead. No, these guys, these guys keeps hitting uh, after the person went down. They keep hitting them till they didn't move or could fight uh, fight back at no more, and they didn't form a threat. Even Mickey, uh, uh, Pepper Mick, who had a knife, showed he had to keep stabbing somebody over and over. So if these that's the first mistake they these military guys made, uh, they went every in every room alone, even though they had the tactical advantage to sweep and clear, but they go alone in every room. So 
that's very dangerous to be decimated one by one and taken out. Uh, if these guys were uh, clearing rooms with at least two or at least three person at a time, even if one got attacked, the others could cover their them. So I don't think these military guys are that well trained, to be honest. They just have good equipment. Uh, like I said before, they didn't communicate. They, the tactics are really... Yeah, they got good uh, technology and gear, but their tactics are are not that military great, I would say. So, um, and now we see the first mit uh, the first mistake I see proper Mick make, and that is after he stepped out, stepped uh, the one of the military guys, he took his weapon and he sh kept shooting out of rage in uh, to kill him off with uh, at least thirty or forty bullets from that weapon, I think. Just shoot one one or two times if you really want to kill him for some reason. But uh, that also let other people perhaps know that, they, that there is another person shooting over there. But conserve your ammo. Mick, you, dis, you disappoint me for the first time in this movie. So if you kill somebody, uh, just shoot one or two times, double tap. And you're going to need the ammo, I think. Alright, they scared those, uh, they fought off those guys outside, outside of the bunker and we now see uh, something also realistic. People who are wounded and not just shot dead immediately. Very good, uh, because even in gunfires, uh, gunfights, there will be uh, more people wounded than really dead. Uh, what I like is, yet again, Pepper Mick, fabulous character, he, he thought through and he Threw, he threw a bandages kit, uh, kit uh, towards the people who were already uh, focused on the wounded people. So he knew he's, he's now walking, uh, keep on walking with a gun to repel another attack if they come back in. He knew if he uh, would uh, be busy with, uh, with the other people, they are not level-headed, they are uh, busy with each other and with the wounded, that somebody uh, keeps an eye on the threat. So... Also a good move from a uh, prepper Mick over here. Uh, what I also like is uh, there are certain people who are in panic. They they try to do to help even though they don't know what they're doing. And some people are level-headed, like that girl. She, I think she she used to have have some uh, some ties to professional medical pr uh, jobs or something, or had some uh, some first aid lessons or courses because she keeps calm and she. And she tries to comfort the wounds, the wounded. Uh, she tries to she already doing some great first aid by putting pressure on the wounds. And even when and they are talking to the wounded person that everything will be fine, which is very good because if a person who is wounded uh, thinks he is getting in more and more in panic, uh, their heart rate will go faster, so they're bleeding faster out. And they move more, so there will be more tissue that could be damaged in those wild movements because of the panic. So try to stay calm. Uh, try to go, how do you say this? Try to keep the people who are in panic. Try to make them calm, like you see, and let the people who know something about uh, medical procedures uh, work on the wounded um, and comfort comfort them. Yeah, that's a good lesson we can uh, learn from this. Very good. Very good. Alright, so the child was abducted by those other military guys and now the mother is uh, 
in panic. She's losing it, she's flipping it because her daughter is taken away, which is very understandable in this situation. And she tries to go outside again to go catch her daughter. She's totally freaking out right now. And um, what we can learn from this situation is the it takes multiple guys to keep her restrained, restrained from hurting either uh, either herself and other people uh, in her while she's freaking out. So that's realistic because usually the uh, movies they use one one of the strongest guy to keep somebody uh, under the thumb, but no, somebody within who is freaking out. Uh, can do a lot of damage, uh, so you need mul multiple persons to keep them uh, restrained. Uh, I like it when that they put her, they lock her up in a storage room to keep not only keep themselves safe, or but also her. Um, but yeah, that's a good move, uh, I guess. But uh, to be honest, I would be, I would restrain her also, so she would not only try to hurt other people, but also herself because. She's now really, uh, I how do we say this? She's really freaking out, and she might uh, try to harm herself uh, or commit suicide because she lost her daughter right now. So that's uh, perhaps something I would have done differently in here. But uh, everything else, great, uh, realistic. Uh, uh, I would have done the same thing, to be honest. All right. Now we see that uh, some some uh, some guys put, uh, put on the has uh, they they call it hazmat suits for some reason. So I it would perhaps be helpful if, with alpha particles, but this will not uh, as as uh, not stop uh, beta or gamma particles and radiation. So I'm kind of doubt this situation. But let's say that they are functioning CBRN suits. Uh, yeah, it's a good strategy to find out what's going on over there, especially after they are attacked. And uh, what I find out is, uh, will it be that effective uh, for protection? Because uh, it seems like a closed system that they need to breathe. But we saw some of, uh, so many of these uh, military guys get shot or stabbed. Uh, yet, they, I hope they uh, patched up those holes, uh, because otherwise the suit will be useless. So... Let's see what uh, what they will do with it. All right, uh, this is a very weird situation. Uh, so outside of the bunker, there are tunnels made out of some protective plastic, uh, I guess, uh, and it is uh, connected to the to their fallout shelter for some reason, which is very odd. Uh, that means they will would later have come back, perhaps. So that's and why is that not guarded? They knew there were more people inside of there that attacked their man. So. Why would they leave it unguarded and connected to their protective uh, tunnels? Which is already weird. They kept the little children inside of some some sort of body bags alive for some reason, perhaps for uh, reproducing later on or something. Uh, yeah, these guys don't ever talk for some reason, these military guys. Um, yeah, it's a very weird situation. So... Um, yeah, there's not much to learn from this because this is uh, a weird situation. Um, perhaps they would... Yeah. I, I don't know what to think of this, to be honest, because I don't know what's, what the hell is going on. Uh, what I like... Well, like what I like is... Yeah, those guy, that guy 
who, who, uh, who got discovered by the other military guys. Uh, he shot two of them down, ran back to the bunker, and who was on? Who was uh, uh, taking cover and aiming uh, the gun at the door for uh, for when, in case when the military got back? Prepper make, of course. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the only lesson we can learn from this, I guess. Hmm. Alright, this is also a good thing that could happen in the, in this situation. They got those dead military guys, uh, they start to rot. Uh, so they have to go somewhere because it's a hazard for them to, for infectious diseases, bugs and that sort of things. So you got to get rid of them. So what do they do? They chop them up in pieces, put them in the septic tank, uh, septic uh, toilet and put lime over them so they won't start to decompose that, that fast or perform a hazard. That's good. What I don't like uh, is they leave the job of chopping the, the dead people in pieces by the least stable guy. Uh, that just that is just asking for later on problems. He is already going mad. He's already not that mentally well. And now you're going to let him chop other people um, in pieces. So that's uh, they're just asking for later problems. All right, so much has, has happened now. Uh, they were beginning to get some tensions because the rations were cut to a lower level. Uh, people started losing weight and they noticed that Pepper Mick didn't lose that much weight uh, compared to them. So, uh, yeah, so they started to get suspicious. One guy tried to threaten Mick with a taser to open his secret door. Uh, uh, to uh, to reveal to him what's behind it. In the struggle, they Prepper Mick uh, shot the guy. The other people uh, were in panic. They overwhelmed Prepper Mick, and they also get suspicious. And the two in most in instable guy were torturing him for to show what's behind the hidden door because it's uh, locked with a safe combination. So they cut off his fingers to. Uh, to make him talk, to make Prepper Mick talk, which is very bad. Uh, yeah, I kind of I kind of feel bad for Prepper Mick. So what's behind his uh, secret door? Uh, more uh, another uh, secret uh, stockpile of food and water. Uh, yeah. So the people are, are now pissed that Prepper Mick uh, held on these supplies on them. But to be honest, I'm 100% uh, agreeing with Prepper Mick. Um, yeah, because he was in charge of the rations and he told people to eat less so they would hold on longer uh, because the food, the regular food stockpile was shrinking. Uh, yeah, these people, they are, they are still not used to this. They are, have no survival instinct. So it's harder for them to, to live in a lower basic uh, lifestyle than they are used to, especially in this stressful situation. So, yeah. Tensions start to start to rise. The mistake that Prepper Mick make made in this uh, occasion, the second mistake he made in this whole in this movie whole movie so far, is that he didn't uh, eat 
the same amount of food that the preppers were, that the, I mean, the other survivors were. So that way he got noticed that he didn't lose that much weight as the others, and that got them suspicious. So, Prepper Mick, that's your, that's your, that's on your, your mistake. If you're going to cut rations for other people, you have to do it too, uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, you will be, you, they will be suspicious that you, like I said, uh, don't lose that much weight. Uh, second, uh, even if these people will discover about your hidden stash, uh, a stockpile of food and water, uh, if you were eating the same thing as they do, uh, they would understand in a way, perhaps, that you try to make it longer so they won't use that much food. Uh, yeah, so now you lost all trust of the your fellow survivors. But yet again, kind of split on this because I understand Pepper Mick. If I if I would have seven unexpected guests in my in my home during such a survival situation, and I see the stockpiles shrinking for something that I didn't plan, I would be a little bit distrustful too and try to coerce the others into rationing. So that's uh, yeah, I'm kind of split on this, but I feel bad for Pepper Pepper Mick over here. All right, so the unstable guys from the beginning, they they started losing it. They are now uh, defending. Uh, how do you say this? They took over the the with the use of the weapons they got. They start to get control over the supplies now. So with Prepper Mick out of the way, they start to fill in that vac vacuum of a leadership in a way. But they are starting to get this starting to get out of control these start these guys are starting to losing it and they say they have to they they say they are in charge of rationing and yet he, he says this is your rationing but i will barter i will barter with you if you want more so the what he's trying to imply is to this girl is i will give you more the so of the supplies if you go to bed with me or something uh, or some other uh uh, weird things they started to do to demand so uh, that is in a way realistic because it happens in the past that where when the when the when a certain leadership and a hierarchy is uh, has gone away over a group uh, people who are more impulsive or aggressive they they start to take control over the situation but that is only good for a short amount of periods uh, for a short time because we will. I bet they will start to rebel against this guy because he's abusing his his power that he got by violence, and uh, yeah, there will be no trust between in uh, two, the the groups because now you got two sort two split groups around here, uh, the people who are in control of the stockpile and start to get corrupt corrupted by either insanity or uh, egotism, so this is a bad situation. Uh, to be in. Uh, they're, they're starting to divide, uh, which is the title of the movie, and now I get it, why it's called like that. So, this is starting to get into a serious problem. It is very very bad. Now the 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 guy who took over control of the supplies is now starting to you see the signs of abuse of his power, uh, asking uh, uh, he used the other girl for uh, sexual favors uh, in in exchange for the supplies. He says that the other people aren't doing anything to contribute to the group, but yet again that's just an excuse for him because. As you can see, the people who he's trying to, in a, in a certain way, is a psychology trick to bribe the other people to get on his side 
So he has some muscle for when somebody starts to rebel against him. And they start to indulge in drugs because they're looking for an escapism. Uh, and they do this in alcohol and cigarettes, which they still have for some reason. Uh, it's kind of weird. But, yeah, that's a very dangerous thing to do. I would say uh, try, if you, if you have a situation where you're with other people, uh, try to cut off... Uh, on a, try to build off the use of uh, cigarettes in the first place because people will get agitated when they do not get their nicotine uh, flash, uh, I mean their nicotine uh, kick. So they st will start to act irrationally when they are not getting it in a highly stressful situation. And also I would uh, only allow a certain amount of uh, alcohol for each person or keep it in the back for uh, other purposes like disinfectants because they, these guys are starting to abuse it. They, like you can see, they are starting to, to abuse the substance and they will make more irrational decisions which will divide them even more. So that is turning into a really bad situation. Uh. All right, yet again, brilliant move of uh, of a Pepper Mick uh, because he would he would know that people will will got divided by some by some reason. I think he should have. That's probably because why he distrusts those people in all that time because he knew they would eventually turn on on each other and they will start to make uh, start to create factions. So uh, the girl who asked for his help. While he's bounded by the guys in control now, um, he says that uh, he left one gun hidden in a coffee pot uh, somewhere in the back, which is a good contingency plan. That's already a good thing of Pepper Mick, because even when his stash got discovered and they would turn on him, he would have a hidden weapon to perhaps use in a later situation, just like this one. So I like that Pepper Mick even thinks ahead for he has multiple plans. He has a plan A. A plan B and even a plan C it seems so that's very very good of Pepper Mick although he could have uh, prevented this in a way if he would have cut the rations for himself the same way for his weight control so uh, yeah but yet again keep on planning ahead that's a good uh, thing we can learn from this Alright, so the factions start to kill each other and threatening and getting control over the gun. And uh, yeah, it's starting to be a Mexican standoff. Uh, some people got killed. And uh, what we can learn from this situation is uh, the girl is uh, who has no weapon um, is not directly seen as a threat by the guy who has the gun. And he's about to shoot the other guy. And this girl uh, impro used an improvised gun. She took the the, the the shell, how do you say this, the plate from the can, wear it off and started to cut the other guy in his throat as an improvised weapon. Uh, this is, uh, what we can learn is improvisation from this scene. Uh, that even everything in your surrounding can be used as a weapon. If it's for hitting, slicing, stabbing, uh, or choking, everything in a way, if, you're, if you have uh, some imagination enough, and um, how do you say this? Uh, improvisation skills. You can do. The, you can turn everything into a weapon, uh, and to your advantage. So that's uh, what we can learn from this uh, scene. Thank you. 
All right, this is a heartbreaking scene to be honest because yeah, the yeah, the uh, during the fight with uh, different factions inside of this uh, fallout shelter, the there was a the gasoline from the generator or something started to catch fire and uh smoke is starting to build up and fumes uh, that might uh, even explode. Um uh, and in that moment the girl uh she she's on she acts on her own right now. She only thinks her own survival now, takes on the suit, and uh, takes on advi advice that uh, that Prepper Mick told her uh, during his capture, is that uh, he had a, a way out do uh, inside of the toilet that will lead to the outside. So that's another, yet again, that's plan D for Prepper Mick in this case. Uh, but yet again, uh, telling that much information, Evie would have told her that, she, that he knew a way out. She... She would have cooperated with him and perhaps escaped together. But by because he told his full plan, escape plan, uh, the girl uh, used that plan for her own. She started to take on the CBRN suit, took some supplies uh, which are will be contaminated if the FC doesn't use a uh, how do you say this a tin cans or something at least for the contamination because otherwise he will not use it out cannot be using it outside. She escapes through the uh, through the septic pit uh, to the outside, while the smoke is killing the rest of the all the people, including Pepper Mike. May he rest in peace. Uh, yeah, and then the whole thing started to explode because the fumes start to catch on fire. So that's a really sad ending for Pepper Mick. Uh, yeah, but to be honest, the girl uh, she knew everything was fucked. The people. Uh, would never be able to to cooperate. Everything was going to hell. To hell, the fires. She knew there was no saving in this situation, so she started to act on her to act in her own uh, self preservation. Which, as a prepper, I can even though it's it's hard to do uh, to leave those people behind. It's it's a survival. It's the best choice for survival, even though it's a hard choice to make. So. Yeah, it's a hard scene to watch, uh, but yeah, that is sometimes in a survival situation you cannot help or save everybody. Sometimes you have to think of your own. Uh, yeah, which is which is very bad if you look at it from a comfy chair like here. But you must always ask yourself uh, what would you do in this situation, and not always uh, what is the correct way because the correct way is not always the the way to survive. So. Yeah, it's a hard scene. All right, so the girl got away. She's now outside. Um, I hope it is nine weeks after the nuclear explosions because they were very close. So the radiation would be higher than than other than on other places. And yet again, uh, she's like you can see, it's everything is destroyed. Uh, she now, I don't know if she will survive this because she only has a few rations, not enough water. And certainly she cannot use a water filter even in this highly radioactive uh, uh, situation outside. So I hope she will find perhaps uh, a way out of the danger zone, uh, the contaminated zone, or she will find help or uh, supply depots from the military guys from the before if they will not shoot her because that could be form another problem. So yeah, uh, I highly doubt her. Doubt her chances of survival outside of this so but yeah 
she will die at least on her own accord. Um, so this was uh, the movie Divided. Uh, we learned some some survival uh, situations. Um, Lucky we can see Prepper Mick was a was one of the is one of the best prepper preppers in movies I've seen so far. Uh, he had contingency plans. He always knew knew how to react. And even though he didn't have to, he helped the others. Uh, even though that could be in his self interest to not get a rebellion uh, against him, which eventually happened because of this. So, uh, yeah. But if it wasn't for Pepper Mick, uh, all of these people would already be dead, to be honest. So, yeah, yeah. It was it was a good movie. It was kind of kind of realistic uh, on the. The only thing I didn't, the only part I didn't like were the military guys with their weird contingency plans. But hey, whatever. So um, I hope I'm going to do this in the future again. Uh, subscribe, like. I hope you learned something from this uh, reaction. Um, so see you in the next video. Thank you.